So another very interesting lesson in which we'll find what are the various forces that act on your body when you're inside a moving elevator. Now, we have split this lesson into two parts. The first part covers your upward journey, that is when you move from ground floor to the top floor. And the second part will cover your downward journey. So let's get on with the first part of this lesson where you step inside an elevator and you're stationary and you put yourself on weighing scales. So your velocity here is zero meters per second. And let us examine what are the forces acting on your body. So we know one of the force is mg, which acts in the downward direction. And the weighing scale will push you up with a certain force, which is nothing but the weight which shows up on the weighing scale. So let's go ahead and label these forces. So you have the weight over here and mg acting in the downward direction. So before going ahead, let's be clear about the sign notation we'll follow. And what we'll follow is any vector pointing in the upward direction would be taken as positive and any vector acting in the downward direction would be taken as negative. You can take a reverse notation as well. But for the purpose of this lesson, we'll follow this notation. So if we write the forces acting on your body in accordance with Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force acting on you or on a body is equal to its mass into the acceleration induced by the net force. And what we can see here on the left hand side, if net is nothing but W acting in the upward direction and we've taken it positive because it's acting in the upward direction, minus mg which is acting in the downward direction should equal zero because you are stationary, your acceleration is zero. And let's say if your mass is 60 kilograms, how you can write this equation is W equals mg over here, or that is your weight. And if your mass is 60 kilograms, what you get is W is equal to 60 into 10. And we'll assume G is 10 meters per second square for the sake of simplicity of calculation. And you get your weight as 600 newtons. Now, let's say the second phase of travel is that your elevator starts moving up. It starts accelerating up. And let's say it accelerates for two seconds till it reaches a velocity of, let us say, four meters per second. And it takes two seconds to attain this velocity. So during this phase of acceleration, that is this, this period, the forces acting on you are one, the force of gravity pulling you down, which we can label once again like this, and the scales pushing you up in the upward direction. And this is once again, nothing but your weight. And this here is mg. So once again, we write Newton's second law of motion equation. And on the left hand side, what we'll find is that the net force is W minus mg is equal to mass into acceleration. And this time around, there's an actual acceleration happening, acting on you. And therefore, we can say W is equal to M times G plus A. And you see that your weight here has actually increased because of addition of A to G. In fact, you can relate to a situation when you get inside the elevator and the elevator starts moving up. Invariably, you feel that you, you're feeling an extra weight on the body. And that's purely on account of this acceleration which is happening and which manifests itself in this equation, this derivation. So let's go ahead and find what is your actual acceleration over here. So we see that A is nothing but the final velocity, which is four meters per second, and we've taken it as positive because it's acting in the upward direction. The vector is in the upward direction, minus zero upon the time taken, which is two seconds. And we find that A is equal to two meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and find what is your actual weight when you are accelerating up. And what you'll find is W is equal to 60 times 10 plus 2 meters per second square or the acceleration that's happening 
and this equals to 720 Newton. So if you are 60 kilograms, you feel that additional weight, which would be about 120 Newton, provided you are accelerating from zero to four meters per second in two seconds. So you can see that this incremental weight is on account of this acceleration. So if this acceleration was, let's say, equal to G, 10 meters per second square, then your total value of acceleration would have been G plus say, or 20 meters per second square, in which case your weight would have actually doubled. So you can see the more the acceleration, the more the weight you would experience. Now, let's say after this point, the elevator is moving at a constant velocity of 4 meters per second. So writing Newton's uh, equation once again, what we get is W minus mg is equal to ma. And since the velocity is constant, the right hand side would be zero because the acceleration is zero. In which case what you get is W is equal to mg or W is equal to 60 times 10, which is equal to 600 Newton. So you see, when the velocity is constant, there's no acceleration, your weight would be the same as what you would experience when you are stationary. And in fact, once again, you can relate to a situation when you've, you've moved from, let's say, uh, ground floor up, there's certain acceleration and you, feed an in, and you feel an incremental weight. But once the velocity becomes constant, you once again start to feel the weight which you normally feel. Now, the third phase would be that the velocity starts reducing. So let's say up to this point, the velocity was four meters per second, but now you're approaching the top floor. So you need to reduce your velocity and your velocity reduces to zero meters per second over here. And let's say this reduction happens over a time period of two seconds once again. So let's examine what are the forces acting on you. So once again, we have mg acting in the downward direction and the scales pushing you up scales or the springs in the scale pushing you in the upward direction so you have mg over here acting in the downward direction and you have weight on the scale which shows up in the scale in the upward direction and if we write newton's equation for this situation what you get is w minus mg is equal to m into a and you'll find the acceleration here would be negative. So let's put the negative sign over here because the velocity is reducing. And therefore, W would equal to M into G minus A. And you can see that your weight actually reduces because of the deceleration. You get a smaller value over here, which effectively reduces your weight. So let's go ahead and see what is your deceleration. So your deceleration here would be A is equal to final velocity, which is zero minus initial velocity, which is four meters per second upon the time taken, which is two seconds. And what you find is it's minus two meters per second square. So the absolute value of deceleration is two meters per second square, but in vector form, it will be minus two meters per second square. And this negative sign has actually been accommodated over here. So let's let's actually find what your weight would be when you are decelerating. It would be W equals 60 into 10 minus two. Now remember, we've, we, we don't write minus minus two because we've already accommodated for the minus sign over here. And what you get is weight equals 480 Newton. So you see there's a reduction in weight by 120 Newton. And this is on account of the deceleration which is happening, which is effectively reducing your weight. And once again, you can probably relate to situation when you're approaching the top floor and the velocity is reducing, that is deceleration is happening and you suddenly feel a little weightless. So th these are the three parts in your upward journey inside an elevator when you have different weights at various stages of movement of the elevator.